Hey Wargamers, I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting Wolverine from Night Models Marvel Universe Miniatures game. Before starting the video, I prepared the model by priming it using Vallejo surface primers in black and white. The entire model was first primed with the black and then the white was primed from above. This gives a what's called a zenithal prime. It's basically a top-down natural light source and it helps you find all the small details in the model. I'm keeping the box art nearby for reference because I want to match it as closely as possible. The key parts of Wolverine's costume are bright yellow and bright blue. I'm going to begin by base coating the yellow aspects with Games Workshop Averland Sunset. I'll also highlight those same parts with Uriel Yellow. This is part one of a two-part video. In this one, I really just focus on getting the base coats down and making sure the details are nice and crisp, and then applying an overall wash to the miniature. In the second part, I'll go ahead and bring out the muscle definition and paint his finer details. So this video is going to be a little bit redundant, but it really focuses on getting really tight, crisp lines where you have conflicting, very bright colors near each other and very, very minute details because the tiny slashes across the sides of his chest and up over his shoulders are very, very small details, especially on night models because they are scaled at a true scale. He's very, very human-like in his appearance. He doesn't have that sort of comic book appearance that a Games Workshop model has. And because of that, every detail is even tinier than you'd expect it to be. Because yellow and blue interact to make green, I want to avoid overlapping the two colors as often as possible. So I am paying special attention to what areas need to be yellow instead of just slopping the paint on and coming back later. This also helps preserve some of the zenithal priming because when you go on with thin layers over a zenithal prime, you do get some natural highlighting happening, and I want to preserve as much of that as I can. Now that said, Averlin Sunset is a pretty opaque paint, so it's really not going to allow that to happen much, but a little bit's better than none. So here you can see I'm taking a lot of effort to avoid the stripes over his shoulders and his shoulder pads, which should be blue, as well as the little slashes on the sides of his torso that would be blue as well. There's a few little spots where I slip up, especially along the sides, and that's okay, I can go back and correct those, but I want to keep the corrections to a minimum because anytime you do overlap blue and yellow, you have the chance of a little bit of green kind of showing up. And obviously I want to avoid that happening. For reference, the brush I'm using here is a Winsor Newton Series 7, Size 1. The Winsor Newton Series 7, Size 1 and Size 2s are basically my go-to brushes, especially for fine detail work. When I'm doing sloppy base coats or applying washes, I like to use cheaper brushes or older worn out brushes. But anytime I need to focus on details, these are the brushes I want to use. They are a little bit larger. I mean, using a number two at first kind of felt unnatural to me because I was so used to using things like an Army Painter Insane Detail Brush, which is itself a very, very fine point. But using the larger brush actually keeps a larger reservoir of wet paint available. And what that means is the paint doesn't dry out on the brush and you're going back to the palette less and the fine details you're painting actually stay crisper because you don't have dry paint kind of making the bristles not do what you want them to do. The larger reservoir created by having a larger set of bristles actually allows the paint to behave more like paint the longer you paint. It's a little bit counterintuitive at first that you want sort of a larger volume of wet paint to paint less, but if you try it out, if you take that leap to using a bigger brush with a fine point, you'll realize it actually improves your painting quite a bit. So here still I'm applying the yellow to the parts of his legs that need to be yellow and I'm trying to avoid as best as possible any areas that are going to be blue. Basically the top of each thigh becomes a blue detail and I want to leave it completely bare primer at the moment as long as possible and as cleanly as possible. The last detail I'm going to base coat with Avalon Sunset is actually the crest on Wolverine's belt. 
At first I was really just focused on the yellow spandex part, but this is yellow too and I need to make sure it gets some paint. Next up, I'm going to use some Citadel Mackridge Blue, and I'm going to use this for all the blue aspects of Wolverine. This is a little bit lighter than it may seem like I should be using, but I am going to hit this with a wash later to kind of bring it down a little bit. And so even though I'm going to be doing highlighting later, I wanted to start a little bit on the bright side and kind of work down from that just a little, and then come back up again with the highlights afterwards. So as far as Wolverine's clothing goes, almost everything that's not yellow is blue. The sides of his cowl, his gloves, the majority of his boots, his shoulder pads, and all the stripes across his torso, as well as two big color blocks on his thighs. Now because I've already painted the yellow, I have to be even more careful with the blue to make sure I don't overpaint any yellow. This is especially troubling with the tiny little stripes on his side. The only detail on Wolverine's boots that isn't blue is black, and that's the trim going around the top of each boot and right down the front. And because it's black, I know I'm going to get good opaque coverage from the paint, and so I'm not worried about accidentally having to paint over the blue with the black. Black is going to cover no problem whatsoever, and so I mean I'm taking a little bit of precaution to make sure I don't paint over those areas, but I'm also not super concerned if I do. Normally with a long base coating process like this, I would either speed up the video or trim out a lot of it. With this miniature, because it's very finely detailed, I felt it was kind of important to give you a sense of almost the real time event here and really kind of see how long everything takes and the kind of precision I put into making sure I'm getting the fine details where I want them. So because of that, this video is a fair bit longer than other videos kind of the same theme for me. I hope that you find this extra detail informative rather than really annoying. So here's where things start to get a little bit tricky because I have to start boxing in the yellow stripes across this side. You can see the yellow kind of bleeds out of the slash just a little bit at the top and bottom, but the line that denotes the slash is very visible. And so what I'm doing is I'm painting the blue up to that line, basically both above and below each of the yellow marks. Getting this right was probably the most challenging aspect to this miniature.
So right about here, I took a look at the box art and realized there's a tiny yellow stripe basically coming down the middle of Wolverine's nose, which I had just left bare primer because I had originally thought it was going to be blue. So I'm, there's a little bit of the Averland Sunset still wet on my palette, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of that and just fix his nose. There's also a couple small spots where the blue bled outside the lines and did end up overlapping the yellow areas a little bit. So since I do have some wet Averland Sunset handy and I want this as crisp as possible, I'm going to go ahead and clean those areas up now before I move on. Alright, the two primary colors are down now. The blue and the yellow base coats are basically done at this point. So it's time to move on to the colors for the other details. I'll be using Citadel Corn Red for his belt, Abaddon Black for his boot detailing, and Vallejo Dwarf Skin for his skin tones. Painting the belt is actually a little bit nerve-wracking because it does butt up against both yellow and blue areas, and it kind of folds in under the gloves at his sides because of how he's holding his hands so tight to his body. And because of that, there's the real possibility that my brush is going to slip or hit the gloves unintentionally, and so I'm doing very, very short strokes. I'm almost just tapping the belt with the tip of the brush, almost like I'm tattooing it. I'm sort of using very sh small short strokes like that to just apply the color in little dabs. I also want to make sure I don't overpaint the yellow crest in the middle of the belt. So really, there's very little of this model that needs to be red, and all of it needs to be very precise. Because of that, I'm holding my breath a lot, taking very short strokes, making sure everything's kind of clean as I move on. It's a very deliberate and slow method of painting, but it's making sure I don't make a mistake. Now compared to painting the red, the black is a breeze. It's very defined straight lines, primarily overlapping the blue areas. There's really nowhere where it comes into contact with the yellow. And that's kind of a bonus because it's really easy to cover up black with the blue, but covering up black with yellow is a bit nightmarish. It takes a couple coats. Yellow paint, even the best yellow paint, is a little bit translucent. And so I'm just I'm really glad that the black purposely butts up against the blue, it just makes this a really easy step. On top of using the black for the trim on each boot, I also use it to paint the sole of each boot as well. Alright, the skin tone is up next, which I am going to use Vallejo Dwarf Skin for. This is a little bit of an orangey skin tone, but it really brings out a good comic book feel. That's why I chose it for this color. This paint has a little bit on the translucent side, and it really takes two coats to get good coverage over the darker parts of the primer. As with the red, the skin tone butts up against basically every other color on the model. And because of that, I need to be very deliberate and make sure I don't make any mistakes, that I don't have to go back to correct with other colors.
You don't see a whole lot of Wolverine's face exposed, really just from his chin to the bottom of his nose. That's really it. So I'm going to go ahead and base coat the whole area with dwarf skin. I probably want to add some extra detail, like maybe tinting it a little bit blue later so it's got the appearance of some facial stubble. And also, his teeth are showing and I probably shouldn't be hitting them with dwarf skin. But it's a really, really small detail. I'll hit that later with a finer brush. It's a lot easier to just kind of paint it dwarf skin now and correct it later because it's such a tiny detail compared to everything else in this miniature. The last detail to go now are his claws. I'm going to be using P3 Radiant Platinum for this color. This is just a straight base coat over primer. There's a little bit of blue overlapping the claws near the gloves I need to take into consideration, but there's not much. Mostly, this is just a nice, smooth, metallic base coat over already light primer, and it's probably the easiest step of this entire miniature. Now I'm going to start shading the miniature using washes. Over the yellow aspects of his clothing and the skin tones, I'm going to be using Seraphim Sepia. I chose Sepia because it plays really well with lighter tones like yellow and flesh. It'll give me some nice warm shadows without making them too deep. It really honors a lot of the color that's underneath it. However, I want to be as careful as possible to get as little as I can on the blue areas. It's going to be inevitable because they butt up against the yellow. But Seraphim Sepia does tend to tint a little bit green against the blue. They do add up the same way yellow and blue paint does. And I want to avoid that as much as I can because I'm going to have to correct that later with paint.
Now as details go, this model's fairly smooth. The creases between his muscles and so on aren't really deep and they don't hold wash well. And because of that, some areas I'm having to wash two or three times to really get the color where I want it. Now remember as you watch this that I am going to come back later and highlight basically everything. This is part one of a two part video, so at the end of this video everything looks a little bit too dark and a little bit dreary. That's basically intentional because this isn't a complete product at this point, this is the halfway point. So I'd originally mentioned wanting to avoid getting the sepia over the blue as much as I can. However, in the really tight crease between his arms and his torso, it's basically impossible. There's going to be some overlap because there are such tiny yellow daggers of color there, so I'm just going to have to go with it. Here I'm using a clean brush to actually blot up some of the wash where I found that it had kind of gone on a little too thickly and was going to lead to too dark of a shadow. This was especially a problem around the face where there actually are some deep creases. Now that the sepia is done, I'm going to use Citadel Azurman Blue over the blue aspects and also on his claws. This is equivalent to using Drakenhof Nightshade now. I just happen to still have some Azurman Blue kicking around. I want to make sure I actually get it used up before it dries out. In the end, the blue is going to be carried much more by its highlights than by its shadows because the blue is already a little bit of a darker color. So I'm not really too worried about getting a lot of shading out of this. Where I especially want to focus this wash is where blue details butt up against other blue details, such as his fingers where he has his closed fists. I want it to help kind of outline each finger. I'm also applying it specifically to creases in his muscles on his thighs. But there's not a lot of them. As mentioned before, this is a fairly smooth model where the muscle definition comes into play. They're not deep creases, and so it's a little bit hard to get the blue wash to hold to them. I'm also using the blue wash to help give the claws a little bit of a cold metallic feel, and to help them isolate from each other because towards the hand, they do kind of bump into each other a little bit, and this helps delineate them. It doesn't get me 100% there, and you'll see in the next video, I actually spend a little bit of time painting between the claws to help isolate them. Alright, thanks for bearing with me through this 26 minute stretch. I hope that you took something from this longer format video. Right now I have to wait for this wash to dry before I can continue working on Wolverine. In the next video I'm going to be highlighting the entire miniature and you'll really see that the blue and yellow come up to that super bright 90s Saturday morning cartoon kind of feel. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.